OK, so let's look at encrypting with elliptic curve methods. Normally, in a method such as RSA, we'll have a key pair, E and N, and D and M. We raise the, the, the value of the data to the power of E mod N, and then we have a cipher, and then we decrypt by raising it to the power of D mod N, and we should get our plain text back again. We can't really do that in elliptic curve methods. But what we do is use what's called an integrated uh, method, which integrates public key encryption with symmetric key. The method we'll look at is called ECIES, or Elliptic Curve Integrated Encryption Scheme. And it uses the power of public key along with symmetric key, such as AES. And with our public key, we have elliptic curve methods. So initially we have Alice and we have Bob. And Bob wants to send Alice some encrypted data. So what we need to do is to get Alice's public key over and then Alice will use her private key to be able to decrypt the data that Bob sends. In the elliptic curve method, we derive the same key on either side and then use uh, symmetric key encryption to be able to send the data, which is quite efficient because public key encryption isn't that efficient when it comes to encrypting large amounts of data. Okay, so initially, Alice will create her private key, DA, typically a 256-bit random value. And then we'll compute her public key, which is DA, G. And where G is the base point on the elliptic curve. And then DA, G is another point on the elliptic curve, which is equal to G plus G plus B, G, DA times. And then we end up with a public key, which is DAG. And the good thing about elliptic curve is that even though we know QA and G, we cannot derive this private key DA from the points on the elliptic curve. So uh, Bob will receive the value of QA, which is the public key, from Alice in a trusted way. Bob will then take uh, this, take, generate a random nonce value k, and then we'll compute a point on the curve k g. And so this is k, run the value, and g to create a, a new point on the curve called r. We can then compute r, which is the x value of this, mod n, and where n is the order of the curve, that's the number of points that we have in the elliptic curve. We can then send that value of r over to Alice. Alice should not be able to determine the value of k which was used here from that value. Now we will compute another point s and we'll take the value here and Alice's public key and calculate a, a new point R and then uh, the uh, QA value the public key to give a new point in the curve. Then we'll take that X value and we'll do another mod N so we end up with a scalar value here for S. Now what we'll do is we'll use a key derivation function, such as pbkdfs2, and we'll take the value of s, and we'll derive our key here. We'll then take that key, s, with some salt, and we'll encrypt with as, and we'll get our cipher here. On the other end, hopefully, Alice will be able to generate the same key that Bob has used here to be able to encrypt the data. So we're using symmetric key here, 
So the salt value and the R value will be sent over and that's all that needs to be sent over with the cipher and then hopefully Alice will be able to decrypt. So on the other end, uh, Alice will then take her private key and then multiply it by the point R here. So that's DA and then that's R, which is RG. That becomes R D A G, and that is R Q A, which is the exact same value that Bob generated there. From there, again, a key derivation function of S, work out the key, and then Alice will have the same key that Bob used and can now decrypt the cipher and recover the message. Okay, so that's a brief overview of C, I, E, C, I, E, S.